Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4, where we are playing the Hellra game of the Dharma update, which is awesome. I'm just sorting out my notifications and things. So, if you are joining the stream for the first time, this is a continuation of the series which is going up on YouTube right now. Uh, if you haven't seen that YouTube series, I would kind of recommend you go and check that out and then check out this uh, video on demand afterwards because there is a lot of stuff that happens getting to this point and it is probably my favorite series I've ever done. Like, it is just such a ridiculous roller coaster of ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Um, this is one episode after what you guys have seen. So there is an episode 10 which goes up tomorrow, so I'm sorry there's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a, a time blip, but most of that episode was spent recovering after the shenanigans of episodes 1 through 9, uh, except for the Reformation has begun. I don't think that had begun yet. Uh, we have embraced Protestantism, we have a center of trade in our capital, which is super nice, and we're starting to convert the stuff around us. I think that's the only thing. I don't remember if we were at war with Brabant before... That I'm not sure about. But anyway, um, basically I need to make sure that I have some episodes ready to put up uh, from after tomorrow. So I I have to stream this now so I can record it and get it ready. So here we go. Um, yeah, this is this is Kelra. It is now 15.13. There has been a completely crazy amount of things. I don't want to summarize too much because like I said, if you haven't seen it, I heartily recommend you go and check it out up on YouTube, which is here. Like, this is very unlike me to tell people to leave if they haven't done something, but it's worth it. Trust me. Right, so what is going on at the moment? We are suffering a deficit. Why are we suffering a deficit? We don't have any army maintenance. Ah, we have a lot of advisors. Okay, that's fine. Government reforms. How far down this line did we get? We got down to meritocratic recruitment, which actually reduces the advisor costs. So that's part of the reason I've probably gone for that. Uh... Oh, we don't get plutocracy. Because we're a European. At least I think it's the Europeans who don't get plutocracy. And then next will be the deliberative Al uh, assembly, which I've actually looked through a little bit further. So one of the things I was kind of not doing during the Hellra playthrough was looking too far forwards. So I know that there is something coming up, which I'm going to be very, very interested in. Why did I previously cancel the annexation of Holland? Um... I didn't. They got their independence supported, and we went over that. Uh, we went to war over that. Because I was at war with my vassal, uh, it was cancelled. I didn't cancel it myself. The game. Uh, Holland cancelled it by, you know, fighting me. But we won that war, and that was actually one of the really good things to happen to us, because it's massively reduced their liberty desire, which is awesome. The other thing which uh, Helson said between episodes, and I'm very grateful that you did, thank you, um, is that I could have been giving them development. And development, every point of development, reduces liberty desire by 5%, which would have been super helpful. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. Uh, there have also been a bunch of other comments. I'm trying to think if there's anything like super pertinent that came up through that. I think that Helson one's the main one. Oh, and also, one thing which just completely made my day is apparently some of the uh, Paradox devs have been watching this. So, hi guys! Thanks! <laughs> and actually tweeted me about it, which was really, really cool. Uh, uh, one of them was asking whether I'd be forming the Netherlands, and yes. And they also asked if I was going to be forming the Dutch Republic. Probably. Don't want to spoil anything. Um, although, while I have your attention, I'm going to be very, very naughty. So, at the moment, when you try to build a building, it will show you what estates you have in your province right now. Huzzah! But the development thing doesn't. It would be super helpful to know what estates were in a province when you're developing it. So if you have, for example, the clergy, you know you probably want to focus on doing the taxes, while if you have the nobility, you probably want to focus on manpower, etc. Uh, that would just be super helpful. Right, uh, what was that? Darameyan, thank you very much for the sub. That's two months now. Nice one. Thanks very, very much for that. I appreciate that. Huzzah! Huzzah indeed! Oh man, I'm so excited about this. I'm also terrified if I'm pausing it. Which is probably why I'm stalling as much as I can, but I don't think I can do it for much longer. Um, we have a spy network against Flanderen. Who are allied with Munster and Oldenburg. Who are my current allies? That's a good question. Like, it's half a week since I played this last as well, and I need to remember what's going on. Bavaria, Brandenburg, and Brunswick. Okay, we've got a pretty good network. Bavaria, uh, Brother. 
Brandenburg, I remember being very strong, but very hard. I'd forgotten how strong you are. And Brunswick's also looking good. So we've got three of the big boys in the HRE on our side. So that's pretty good. And I don't think they hate each other, unlike some of my alliances yesterday with uh, Garwal. Mordred, don't worry. All of the things will go to plan. I am sure they absolutely will not. Uh, what idea am I doing? Exploration and economic. That's fine. And I believe I'm using one of my colonists right now to improve development. Yeah, so I've currently got him going in Helro, which might not necessarily be the best choice. I didn't realize just how much of a difference the development size makes. So I believe that 5% chance every year is the absolute minimum uh, that you can get. So because this is already a 30 dive province, every year we have a 5% chance of adding one base tax production or manpower, and that chance is... Uh, increased by having lower development and also uh, modified further by your development cost modifiers which I don't think I have very many of. We haven't finished economic just yet. I haven't been using edicts and I absolutely should be. That's one thing I'm going to need to look at. And so if we hover over here we see that there's actually a 9.6% chance. So it's double the chance of getting a development point here instead. So if I cancel you and put you here instead how long does it take to go? One. How long does that take to cancel? Alright, you've cancelled. Why can I not click on you? Ready working to make it into a core. Oh, I can't while well, it's a core. Okay, go back to Kelda. Cool. Estates. No. Uh, thingy. Edicts. So one of the edicts that we could do, which would actually be for this entire state, which includes Upper Kelders and Kelra, would be development cost or unrest? No, not unrest. Trade power. We could boost the trade power here. That is sorely tempting. Although I don't own loan, and it would be better to do it in this area. Wow, this is a really big state. That's five provinces. I don't use these nearly enough. Change autonomy? I mean, we only have two provinces here out of the five. Autonomy is going to be zero. You're my capital. Autonomy here is extremely high. And here. Unrest is also really, really high. I suspect that I have been decreased... No. Yeah, decreasing autonomy. I haven't done it here, and I probably should. I have an army. I'm not worried about that. I don't have a coalition. No chance of a coalition. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. Decrease the autonomy. We'll make some more money and stuff. Awesome. Then we could use the unrest reduction thing. We can also use the autonomy reduction thing. We could use the trade power. How reliant on trade am I at the moment? That's probably why I'm not making money, actually, is I'm not currently encouraging trade. So let's go ahead and do that. What happened between the latest episode and this one? I see you've taken a bit from Brabant. Yes, I went to war against Brabant in, like, a Blitzkrieg war. Took one province. I wanted to take more, but that would have caused serious problems, like uh, aggressive expansion. We would have definitely spawned a coalition against people like Austria had we done that. Because these provinces are both extremely high development. They're both very, very wealthy, especially for Brabant itself, plus it's the capital. And we didn't quite have enough war score to vassalize. So I've taken one province to keep the coalition down and also the truce down. And then we'll go after uh, Breda and Brabant later. Um, probably try to vassalize them. Don't forget to rebuild trade ships. Oh yeah, those were the Dutch ships. Ah! I'm uh, annexing the Dutch right now, or I am the Dutch. I'm annexing Holland right now, and when I do, I will inherit their ships, and I intend to use those. What is my force limit? Yeah, building extra is not really worth it, and I already have five that are out doing their trade thing. Cool. So I'm pause and see what happens. Uh, forts are currently active. I don't think you necessarily need to be, so we'll turn you off. Austria and the Ottomans are now rivals. Liège is no longer a valid rival. My once nation. So I can go after Brabant. Uh, or Utrecht. Both of them attempting. I think Brabant is more likely because I really want their, their stuff. Although Utrecht has taken over Friesland. Oh, now that's interesting. You're allied with Frankfurt and Oldenburg. You're only allied with Saxony. And this is a wimpy Saxony. How long's the truce? Uh, oh, quite a long time. 13 years. 
Oh well. We'll just need to wait. Ah, I believe that one of the things I did is force them to change religion, possibly. No, they're already Protestant. Okay, it wasn't that. Am I going for a trade empire here or becoming the Netherlands? Both. Like, my main ambition from this is to see how the trade company mechanics work now. Uh, that is one of the things that really drew me to Dharma. I hadn't expected to enjoy the stuff in India itself as much as I have been. Uh, that, that's that been kind of a surprise. I was not expecting that to be as good. Am I actually allowed to say that? No, I'm going to say it, sorry. As good as it actually is. Um, but I really want to see India from the European perspective, and I want to see how the trade companies work, particularly the ability to buy provinces and also upgrade them. And also how the new flow of trade system works. Um, because that is a thing which the Dutch were heavily invested in. With the Ostindische Company, which is the first privately traded company on the stock market. Interesting fact. New Amsterdam will survive this time. Right? Maybe? Gain trade protection against Bremen. They are doing naughty things. Right, so one of the other things that is apparently possible is, I think, you can actually try and buy land from Africa. Charter company, here we are. Oh, I only need a diplomat. Okay. So if I stop spy networking on Brabant, because we don't need it anymore. Oh, no. Can't ask for a charter company when at war. Requesting a charter company requires at least 838 ducats. Crikey. And they have no coast provinces within our colonial range that are not either their capital or already part of a trade company. Alright, so what is my colonial range? This is a button which has suddenly become a heck of a lot more important. Uh, my trade company range is not amazing. That's 489 away, my range is 325. So we're definitely going to need to go up the exploration tree a little bit further than we have, particularly up to this. So overseas exploration has suddenly taken on a whole new level of importance. What provinces do you need to reform the Netherlands? That is a good question. Uh, you need the ones that are currently highlighted in purple. So we need Friesland, we need Breda. Probably Utrecht? Yes, we need Utrecht. Oh, it even says Breda, Zeeland, Amsterdam, we both have. Utrecht, Friesland, and Den Haag. So Den Haag, Amsterdam, and Zeeland we already have already. So it's just Breda, uh, Utrecht, and Friesland. Breda, Utrecht, Friesland. So, war against Brabant, war against Utrecht. Job's done. Job's done. Are there any buildings I could be building? Because I seem to have a bunch of money. Yes, we could do a workshop. For 82, is there anything else I need the money for? Do we have any loans? No. Yeah, we'll go ahead and build that. This is planning for the future. We could also do with building a fort potentially on uh, Helra. Friesland, Helra, Antwerp. Right, so the other thing that we have now is a coastal center of trade, which once this has been stated, which we're about halfway to, we can start upgrading it. That costs a lot of money, but is, I think, going to be well, well worth it. Particularly when we get it to level three, when it starts to uh, increase or decrease the development cost of everything around it and starts to really come up with some very significant bonuses. Like, it is worth investing money in that, I think. Though, we can find out for sure soon. TM. Right, the other thing which I have totally not been doing, because I didn't know how it worked, is the autonomous rebel suppression. So we're currently getting rebels in Antwerp, so if we move our army down here, and then we turn on manage autonomous rebel suppression, uh, you can basically click on different areas so long as they're contiguous, so they're not. But we could go and protect um, Holland, for example, if they were having issues. And it will automatically assign troops basically within that sphere of whatever your sphere of influence is. Which is super nice and it will tell you how much it is uh, reducing unrest here. So because we currently have zero maintenance, it's not going to be doing anything. But if we increase our maintenance where we're budget neutral, it then minus 3.35... Uh, unrest reduction. And because we're doing the autonomous rebel suppression, that multiplies this number by 500%. Which is a lot. Because we have quite a few regiments assigned to it. Who are my allies? My allies are Bavaria, Brandenburg, and Brunswick. So these three. Oh, 
Will we see any colonizing action? Almost certainly. I don't know how heavily I'm going to go for North America, but I'm definitely going to be going heavily for India and possibly Indonesia, because I don't usually bother that heavily with Indonesia. I find it too much of a problem to hold on to those provinces and defend them. Uh, but this would be the right time to show that type of thing off. Like, I really like colonial nations. I like just letting them get Huzzah! on with it. You can provide them with some resources, you can provide them with protection, and then just kind of a very, very high level uh, management, but I, yeah, I, I just like that system. I like them being fairly autonomous in how they manage their own affairs. It also makes it a hell of a lot easier to control large empires when they do that. So one of the things I would really have liked, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way, is for charter companies to do the same thing, but I don't think they do. And Diomedine, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. I really appreciate your support. Thanks. Thank you very much. And thank you also for the follow. <laughs> Not many people sub and then follow. True story. We have gained a core onto our finally. So now we can have a look at this and see that it... Uh, maybe I need to let some time pass. Can only upgrade essential trade and oh, it's not stated. Right, yes, I need to state it first. So we're going to state it. Click and core. Click. Right now it's stated. Now I can see that it is going to cost me two hundred ducats. So I should totally have saved that money that I just spent on the workshop to build you. Oh well, never mind. We'll earn it back quickly enough. And also, I feel like the rebel risk is not particularly worth actually paying my army right now. So we're going to drop the uh, suppression. Drop the maintenance, drop the suppression. Liège has announced Brabant as a new rival. That's slightly unfortunate. Uh, CB against Bremen because they are still pirating me. Naughty, naughty. Um, so, if I wanted to go after Utrecht, Frankfurt and Oldenburg, that would definitely be easier going after you. I think I just want to let... The very angry nations get slightly less angry so I can take a bunch more. I think to that end I'm going to start putting outraged countries just automatic. And I might also stop doing that against you. Workshops have been built, excellent. And start improving automatically with the allies as well. Just to make sure that we can keep them sweet. Because we've been fairly heavily reliant on our allies. And also bear in mind that when I was recording this for the first time it was like... Six o'clock in the morning, after a full day, and I was going a little bit loopy. This time it's only after four hours of streaming, so I'm slightly less loopy, a little bit more focused. So I'm going to be doing the trade company going tall kind of play. Yes. And it's going to be a lot easier to go tall now that estates have a bit more to them. Although, unfortunately, we just have the... <laughs> can't believe I'm saying this. We have the boring old European estates. What I really hope that they add more of in the future are more estates for more nations. Like, I, I do actually like how they've handled the estates in India. Antwerp is converted to Protestantism. Excellent. So all of us are 100% Protestant. And I didn't even need to send a missionary out to do it. It also means that you are now accepted culture and religion, which means that you should be providing me with tons and tons of cash. And indeed, my treasury is rewarding me. Will we see the Greater Netherlands? After all, Normandy is clearly Dutch, and London will definitely be Dutch once we get hold of it. Maybe. That's not my goal. My goal is India. I want to focus heavily on India. Like, if I could turn India Dutch perfect or at least like in my sphere of influence solidly in my sphere of influence because apparently one of the things which uh, paradox has managed to fix is make the rest of europe and in fact the rest of the world interested in india so what used to happen is you would get the player going to india building a little bit of an enclave over there and the ai just going yeah fine whatever now the ai will actively go there as well because it knows how wealthy it is and also because the trade company mechanics can actually be used by the ai which apparently they couldn't before so that is something I'm excited about. There's actually going to be European competition in India for that Indian cash, which is going to be awesome. Aachen declared war on Trier. Aachen. Trier. OPM versus 2PM. 
Okay. And an advisor died. Ooh, morale of armies. That's always tempting. Let's grab you. And we're focusing Diplo because we want to get these exploration ideas as quickly as possible. Reasonable. Whoa, those separatists are about ready to fire. I am glad I glanced over at that. Let's go ahead and increase the maintenance. Let's also go and activate the fort. And we're just going to stand here for a moment. Because if they'd spawned there and I was on zero morale, that would have been bad. That would have been very, very bad. Isaac Ernberg, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. And we can get a new tech, which is military. And we're behind in military, so that's a good thing. And this will allow me to get new infantry as well. Right, so. Choices. gallic like infantry are excellent if you are out to do manpower damage. And if you have a decent manpower pool of your own and a decent amount of morale, because you see their morale defense is just one pip. They can break enemy, uh, you, en enemy armies with low morale easily, though. Lonsknecht are the most defensive. They have morale resistance. So if you are not expressly a military nation, you probably want Lonsknecht and then Condotta do damage, but also have a slightly more balanced uh, way of handling defense. I think we're going to go outright defense. We're just going to go with the defensive morale, Lonsknecht. Rising support from the Flemish population. As a leading figure of the Flemish community, Ewald Sheikik has both good sights and strong influence far beyond the council of which he is part of in Arnhem. A fact that he is used to our advantage, strongly increasing the popular support for both our duchy and the Dutch people that rule it. Awesome. So unrest reduction in Antwerp and upper holders, and also production efficiency bonus. Uh, speaking of which, we produce cloth in upper holders. What actually is the capital of you? Ruhrmond. Okay. And you are Arnhem. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm from that area. And then Antwerp. Antwerp is obviously Antwerp. So in I was in the Netherlands over the weekend and we went by car because the parents insisted on driving. And the amount of traffic around Antwerp is obscene. It's ridiculous. It takes such a long time. Like, going from Dunkirk to um, Antwerp is just like, Nyeom! straight through. Hit Antwerp and you're just like, okay, stuck in traffic for an hour. Hit the other side, Nyeom! all the way to Arnhem. You will, with no limit and no bound, may choose for yourself the limits and bounds of your nature. We have placed you at the world's centre, so you may survey everything else in the world. Mirandola Piccolo, Oration of the Dignity of Man. So we get the blooming renaissance, which gives tech cost reduction, yearly prestige, but costs me some money. Or no, we have enough problems. I... Yeah, for 20 years, tech cost reduction? Sure. I wish I'd got that like a month ago, though. Come on, separatists. In fact, I could be standing here and not need to be on full morale because we have a fort there and they'll need to siege that down. Church power 100, so I can now upgrade. Huzzah! Um, my dear cost would be great. Development cost would be great. Discipline and or morale of armies and navies would be great. Legitimacy at the moment would be good, but I see that more of a short-term thing. Same with the unrest. Because I think that for the foreseeable future we will be teching up. We're only two years away, so idea cost is not necessarily what we need. Morale and discipline? Possibly? Prestige is also super low. In fact, I might actually go for prestige. I'm going to do prestige. I want that to recover. I want to get the morale and stuff from it. And it reduces trade as well, doesn't it? Yes, global trade power minus 5.6. Which is bad. It's very, very bad. And I think I will actually stop paying the army and rely on that fort instead. That'll save me a lot more money. Now watch as they fire this month. How many new estuaries and centers of trade are there now? A lot. There are an awful lot. So estuaries aren't as prevalent. I think they haven't changed at all, but centers of trade absolutely have because there is the system of upgrading them now. So you can choose where you want them and just ignore those that you don't. So there's now like four of them in England. One, two, three, four. Four of them in five of them. Six of that's an estuary. Six of them. Five. I can't count. Five in uh, northern France and the Low Countries. So ten centers of trade total. 
Nine cents is a trade total for um, the English Channel trade node. There's a lot more. And in fact, this is sparse compared to India. India feels a little bit more like northern Italy here, where, again, there's tons. I mean, just in this box, there's, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, if I spread it out to Istria. So, yeah, there's, there's an awful lot more. An awful lot more. It would be nice if trade companies acted like colonial nations since the East India Trade Company and the BEIC were effectively colonial nations. Yes, I know. And I do kind of feel like they've got those the wrong way around. The trade companies should be the autonomous ones and the colonial nations, or the colonies, shouldn't. The colonies were more affected by direct rule basically until the independence of the USA. I mean, the, the colonies in America didn't have that much independence. Well, the trade companies absolutely did. They they had private armies, for goodness sake. We received word that Austria is ha, has embraced colonialism. Austria is now a great power. Uh, speaking of embracing, I suspect that we are up to... No, we're not. Ah, because it's spreading slowly. So France has got it. Paris is spreading it. And we'll get to Valois. Artois won't get it because that's English and they hate the English. It'll take a while to get to us. Uh, how can I get colonialism? So if we click on one of my provinces and then we go to the institutions, then zero point month, uh, month. Nearby friendly province has it. Nearby port neighboring province with colonialism. Port neighboring province. Oh. Wow, okay, so the ports can get it really quick. Poor capital country of a new world colonial nation. We don't have that either. So France must have a colonial nation already, which is possible. And then we have a very high spread modifier. So when we get it, it's going to go through our country like lightning. But we have to get it. Come on, Antwerp. Rise up. Do your thing. Have your fun. So if owning multiple centers of trade, is it more efficient to concentrate on upgrading one fully or to spread out their development? I'm not sure. That is to be determined through playing. Um, it's definitely worth upgrading them. Um, so if we do a quick comparison, which should actually be easy at this stage of the game. So we have a level 1 here in Antwerp, which we need to upgrade really quite desperately. You get a plus 5 trade power from it. If you have a level 2 and it goes up to an entrepot, then you get a minus 5% uh, local development cost reduction, plus 10 trade power instead of plus 5, and then also the plus 10 institution spread. And now get ready for this. Once you hit level 3, 3 is a big one, world port. In that province, you get plus 25 local trade power. That's 5 times more than a level 1, and also a 30% institution spread. Furthermore, all of the provinces in that area, so in this case, everything in Venetia, gets a minus 10 development cost reduction, 100% local sailors modifier, and every province can also build an additional building in that area. And you get a 0 0.25 global modifier uh, to your yearly naval tradition. I suspect that also stacks. So the more of these world ports that you have, uh, the more of all of those big bonuses you're going to get. So in areas where that's really concentrated, you can definitely see how, how that zone would expand a lot so for example venetia actually has two centers of trade in that area let's double check that's true yeah so you've got verona and venetia if you get both of those to level three that would be amazing although i don't know if it's possible to get more than one in an area to level three i have a feeling that might actually be the case so that might be why verona hasn't been upgraded to level three not sure about that haven't tested it Burgundy insisting will be a problem for France. Yes, it will. And England, having actually gained more territory here, will be a problem too. If France has a colonial nation, it would show up here. They don't, so they haven't. So how did Paris get the institution? 